Welcome back, Clinical Problem Solvers. Today, we're going to talk about AV nodal disease. I was sitting on morning report. They showed an EKG in a patient who had syncope, and I had difficulty distinguishing complete heart block from second-degree heart block. When we talk about AV nodal disease, you either have first-degree heart block where you have delayed transmission of, of signal from the atria to the ventricle, because remember, the AV node should delay the transmission. That's the PR interval. It should delay it to allow the atria to contract and blood into the ventricle and empty all that blood into the ventricle so you get good cardiac output. But when it's prolonged, it's diseased first degree AV block. Then you have second degree where you have intermittent drop beats, meaning the atria and the ventricle for the most part are communicating well where the, the SA node is sending a signal to the AV node down the bundle of his, the right bundle, the left bundle giving you the left anterior fascicular branch and the left posterior fascicular branch through the Purkinje fibers. And it's in sync for the most part in second degree heart block, but some of these signals don't make it to the ventricle. So intermittently, the signal from the atria, from the SA node, doesn't transmit to the ventricle. So you have intermittent blocks or a complete heart block where nothing transmits from the atria to the ventricle, completely dissociated. And this is called AV dissociation. The atria are doing their own thing based on the SA node. The ventricle are doing their own thing based on whatever escape rhythm you have, whether it's in the bundle of his or below. So how do we use intervals to make progress on second degree versus third degree? In the second degree, you have MOBIT type one, MOBIT type two, and then you have complete heart block or third degree heart block. You have the PP interval, the RR interval, and the PR interval. Let's start with the PP interval. What do you expect the PP interval to be in MOBIT type one? How about MOBIT type two? How about complete heart block. Well, if you know that the SA node is responsible for depolarizing the atria, which gives the P wave, it's not under the influence of the AV node. No, the signal is going this way. It's not, it doesn't care what's happening in the AV node. Therefore, it's, if, as long as that's healthy, it's going to contract at a regular interval. So in all three, whether the atria are communicating with the ventricle or not, the PP interval is going to be regular in MOBIT type 1, MOBIT type 2, and third degree because it's not influenced by AV nodal disease. What about the RR interval? Well, tell me, for type 2, what do you expect the RR interval to be? Regular, right? Because it's not under the influence of the atria. There's a complete block. So the ventricle, the R interval is going to be regular, 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 regular. So in third degree heart block, the PP interval is regular and the R interval is regular. And you literally have to use a caliper, or I use a paper and you mark to measure the RR interval. And you go through the, the rhythm, at the rhythm um, lead at the bottom and make sure that those RR intervals are regular. That's complete heart block. What about Mobitz type two? Well, the way I distinguish Mobitz type two from Mobitz type one, we know one in general is more benign, two is concerning and it can progress to complete heart block. So two is more diseased. One is somewhat diseased, but it's still sending signals better from the atria to the ventricle than Mobitz type two. So what we expect to happen for Mobitz type two is your RR intervals are fixed before the drop E. So literally you have like a PQRS, P, Q, R, S, P, and then drop B. And if you measure that R interval preceding the drop beat, it's regular, regular. And then even where you expect that beat to be where it dropped, if you pick up and continue measuring, it's going to be regular. The R interval is going to be regular. Does that make sense? Because we know with Mobit type 2, spoiler alert, the PR interval is fixed. And then boom, drop B. So again, P, Q, R, S, P, Q, R, S, P, drop B. So what is that telling you? Three P waves two QRS, that's a three to two um, block. And if you pick up your, your caliper and you measure right where you expect the QRS to be, the next QRS will land perfectly right there. But with type one disease, where it's somewhat diseased, but not completely, so it's fighting, it's fighting, meaning that it's still sending the signal, but it's getting more delayed, more delayed. The PR interval is lengthening and lengthening and lengthening. The R interval actually shortens and shortens ever so slightly, but you should be able to detect that if you do QRS to QRS. So if you have PR prolongation, PR prolongation, and the longest PR interval is right before 
the, the drop beat happens, meaning you get PR, 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 P, and then drop beat. The RR shortens. Remember, Mobitz type one, PR lengthens, RR shortens. And the reason the RR shortens is a bit hard to appreciate, but it's because the PR prolongation, at least is what I read, let me know if this is wrong, email me, resmanesh at gmail.com, is that the PR prolongation with every subsequent prolongation, it's less and less. So literally the R waves are getting closer to each other because the PP interval is staying constant. It's hard to understand that. I, I know it's hard to understand that because it's hard for me to understand that. Probably maybe I'm not teaching it well, but it's to know that the PR prolongs because it's weak, but not as disease as type two and the RR shortens. So now we know complete heart block, Mobitz type two and Mobitz type one all have the same PP interval because that's SA node function. Complete heart block, the RR intervals are all regular. Why? Because there's complete dissociation between the atria and the ventricle. In Mobitz type two, right before um, the drop beat and after the drop beat, you have regular RR intervals and the PR intervals are, are regular. In type one, the PR prolongs, the RR shortens. Um, yeah, in that rhythm. But what if you have a two to one block? Look, P, Q, R, S, P, drop B. P, Q, R, S, P, drop B. Two, two P waves, one Q, R, S, two to one block. How can you tell? This is top. So you know you're dealing with a second degree heart block, but is it Mobitz type one or Mobitz type two? If it's narrow complex, more likely to be Mobitz type one, but even Mobitz type two, because you can have the escape rhythm be at the, the hiss, the bundle of hiss, you can still have narrow complex. So that doesn't completely distinguish the two, though it favors Mobitz type one. If it's wide complex, assuming the patient doesn't have an underlying bundle branch block, it's favoring more Mobitz type two. But really, if you cause sympathetic stimulation, go walk that patient. Which one do you expect to get better? Which one do you expect to get worse? What do you think? Well, remember, Mobitz type one is not as diseased as Mobitz type two. So it's going to get better, meaning you're stimulating the SA node. It's firing, it's firing. You have increased sympathetic stimulation and the SA node is firing. And now more signal is going to transmit to the ventricle. So instead of being two to one block, you have three to two, for example, three P waves, two QRS. That, that is less of a block than two to one. Two to one is only 50% of the atrial depolarization is conducting to the ventricle, while three to two is 66%. So you see, or four to or or four to three. Now you have four P waves, three QRS complexes. That is 75% are actually being conducted. So that's why Mobitz type one improves the sympathetic simulation. While Mobitz type two it's low, the block is lower. So the ventricles are refractory. So you're increasing atrial contraction. So you're seeing the P waves, P waves, P waves, but you're not increasing ventricular, you can't increase it. So you're worsening the block. So you go from two to one, now you have three P waves and then it occurs. So you, you, we had a P wave, right? Um, QRS, P wave, and then drop it. So that was two P waves per one QRS. But now all of a sudden you have P, Q, R, S, but then you have P, 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 and then P, Q, R, S. So you have like three, four P waves before you have a Q, R, S. So only 25% or less of the signals are being transmitted as opposed to 50%. So that's one way to distinguish the two. And this is also why atropine can help when you're dealing with complete heart block that is in the AV node where you have a lot of vagal stimulation, but can worsen complete heart block, that's infranodal complete heart block because you're just increasing activity in the atria, but it's not gonna get through that um, electrical system. That might be a little more difficult to, to grasp, but think about it. If I were to summarize this, when you see an electrocardiogram, zoom out, measure PP, P, all of these have regular P intervals, measure the RRR, um, complete heart block has regular R intervals throughout, while Mobitz type 2 has regular R intervals before and after the beat, so you can predict when the next QRS is going to be. And then in Mobitz type 1, the R interval should be shortening, 
And the PR interval is lengthening. And if you have two to one block, stimulate, SIMPA improves MOBITS type one, worsens MOBITS type two.